mean, that's, that's not something that has to be thought about in this budget or maybe not the next one, but it needs to be addressed and, and it takes a year or so after you start after you start thinking about a truck to actually get it ordered. Well, yeah, if you're going to look at new. Um, okay, but so you're, that inspection falls under the truck repair account. Right, right. And I think probably, I just got the bill for that, so it doesn't show on the actual for this year, and that was 400 and eighty some dollars <clears throat> and the, the, the repairs that we can't do in spring because we got to be able to get it outside and get some kind of a loader or something. Okay, and that's going to fall under the 0809 actual when it gets done, it should, right? Should. Should. So you're going to blow with your 2750, you think? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have, and you don't show, the inspection isn't on, isn't there yet. Yeah, so there's 1600, you're going to yeah. You're going to have that 2750 that was budgeted, spent for sure, and possibly for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I got a valve needs replaced in the uh, in the other pumper, but I don't know what that's going to cost. I have no idea. A couple hundred bucks, I suppose. Yeah. Couldn't believe. I mean, I just I didn't know whether yeah, actually Adam cut 250 there, you know, there whether we could could afford to cut that or you can't. Or, I mean, you don't know of any. We made a few phone calls. Other obvious sure. repairs in yeah. the next year. I mean, nothing yeah, that you put off well. that you know needs no. I mean, no, when something happens, we fix it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the 27, well, actual 23, actual 37, we're going to get about a couple of them. You're squeezing pretty tight on the 2500, I think, probably. But. I'm, uh, you're going to have to tell me if we're going to have to increase it because, uh, uh, you know, anything we increase that we don't decrease somewhere else it, well, uh, is going to impact the assessment. Or it's going to increase our bottom line, but I mean, if, can you take it out of the gas or, I mean, gas and fuel are way down, which who knows if they'll stay, but it looks like even with what it's been when we've had high prices, we're not using near what's been budgeted. So, I mean, if you run short in one area, it's all general fund anyway, isn't it? Can't we what just offset What scared one? me with gas, yeah, and you're right there, yes. What That's scared me with gas and oil was that 0607 number, mm -hmm. where it was $1,100. Mm -hmm. But you're very much right. We don't have to be that accurate if the money is in the budget. And right, right. He goes right. over in one, but he's under in the other. In the, right. in, like I said, well, you're just saying that. In the past, if I see towards the end of the year, I can, I can not do something over here to make up for what I had to spend over here. Yeah. Well, actually, what I guess I have to assume that we've never gone over budget. What happens if they actually go over budget? Well, we would pick up the difference. The city covers the difference, or does it get passed on to the next year? Well, don't think we won't bring it up, but <laughs> we pick up the. Okay. Any other thing, you know, you have because some cushion in your miscellaneous even with the CRP here. front, it only looks like it ought to be fair. Physicals, I mean, <laughs> in the past, the miscellaneous has an amount of what, what the budget ask. was. That's what we would come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just try to watch it so I don't go over the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's, the, he that's have the critical have thing. Yeah. I agree. That's to be all honest, since we do not have um, FICA and we don't have IPERS and any of that, in the fire department, um, that's the only line in the budget in the most departments that you can't use the money elsewhere in, oh, right. in, in their budget. Um, those lines have to be used for that purpose. Now everything else in that, as long as you don't go over your bottom line number, you are, because we know budgets are not, they're an imperfect tool. Oh, right, right. They're a tool and they're that's what they are and they're imperfect. What your hope is, is that you don't go over the bottom line. Because that's when you have to start adjusting the overall budget to the compensate. Well, that's what I was wondering if you think you're... And if that happens, well, I'll ask you guys to have an emergency meeting so we can talk about capital money. That's how we would attempt to... If it got significant. If it got significant. If it didn't get significant, we would hold it off till next year. Spread it up to you at the next regular meeting. Probably compensate for an extra... 600 bucks here or there. 
So Jack, if your cylinder's a thousand bucks, I mean, are you comfortable with where everything else is that you can make up for that difference somewhere? Oh, probably. Well, I mean, there's uh, yeah. Or either way. Well, like, I guess my problem, just like radios, was budgeted two thousand. So far, we spent three twenty-six. Did we not buy some radios that we were planning on, or? Well, and and that's. Did we usually over budget, what, or I mean, usually we what we were doing is getting down toward the end of the year. We'd go by what our radio budget was, and we'd replace pagers. Mm -hmm. Now last year we replaced pagers because we got a rebate back from Motorola. What most of your city departments do is, is they do a critical path process. In other words, I have 15 different line items on my budget. Well, I have certain line items that I know were my most critical. Those are the areas where I have to spend my money first. Then at the end of the year, if I still had money in this line item and this line item, uh, but I'm overspending a critical line item, I simply don't spend on those non-critical line items. So that way I can say that, well, you know, overall the budget stayed in the black. How I might have been over on this particular line, but I was over where I needed to be over. I didn't waste the money buying radios mm -hmm. first of the uh, budget year, and then when I really needed it for car repair or for truck repair later on, I didn't have the money. Um, I make sure I've used it for all my truck repairs first, and then whatever's left over that isn't gone over the overall budget, then I can use for my radios. I've done that in the past. Too. I see within a couple, three months left, I'm going to have some money. I can buy something I need. I'll go buy it. But I, I just pay what has to be paid the first eight, nine months of the year, mm -hmm. just maintenance type stuff. And then if I got some money left, I'll go. I'll go buy something that I, that I think I need. We do that with a lot of the different departments. We, we'll put in capital projects into the uh, into the budget, but we'll have a caveat in there that those will not be funded in before January first. So that way, if revenues aren't coming in where they need to be, well, we didn't waste our money up front on these capital improvement projects that didn't have to happen, um, and we just simply hold them off until the next year. And the budget can continue to stay in black. The miscellaneous for these physicals and stuff, it's a yearly deal then? Yes. And what we presented to the uh, regional rep and what was included in our bills letter was a process to have us completely compliant within a four to five year period of time. That understanding that even once we could put together budgets, that there was no way we could afford the twenty-five to $35,000 cost of getting up to compliance right. in one year. No. There was no way we could be able to do that. And the local rep understood that and accepted that that was this process and, and agreed that our process of having been compliant within five years was acceptable. How many are you going to try to do each year, Adam? Well, this year we it, it'll have a lot to do with how many we can get the, uh, the physical paperwork done. If we can get the physical paperwork, we'll do several this year. If we can't, my goal is is that for every full one we have to pay for, we probably can't pay for more than three and five in a year. Right. At the very I say that's what I was getting at, according to what you yeah. budgeted. You yeah. After that, it's going to cover very many. Of them. No, and they understood that. But we also basing that upon the concept that we have a shrinking volunteer fire base, and that what we'll do is we'll start with the youngest members first. So for the concept that they will likely have the most longevity, continue to right. So that by year four or five, once you're getting to your more seasoned fire members, um, there's a oh, chance guys. that by then they look at you guys yeah. when they said that. <laughs> they might be already you're retired. Yet, so <laughs> through shrinkage, you actually <laughs> were able to uh, eliminate how many you did. Because it wouldn't make sense for us to spend a whole lot of money getting Jack physicaled up this year for a thousand dollars, and then Jack retires in a year. It makes no sense for us to spend the money on Jack when we can spend the money on 26-year-old Johnny, who right. will probably be a fireman for the next 20 years, and do him first because...